Tactics are some of the most fundamental ideas in all of chess. So today I will be ranking them. The top seven best tactics in all of chess. If you happen to like the video, then like and subscribe. Enjoy. First up, we have what might be one of the most common tactics in all of chess, the pin. A pin is basically an attack on one piece with a more valuable piece behind it. So for example, in this position, bishop to g5. This bishop pins the knight to the queen, so that if the knight, for example, were to move to g4, black would lose their queen. The pin is a very, very common tactic. Most often it is used in an example like this, pinning a knight to a higher value piece like a queen or a king in an opening. But for example, an absolute pin could happen in the middle game or an end game, completely disabling a piece due to a king behind it. And if the piece were to move, it would be checked, so it's not allowed to move. But always remember, when you have a pin, you want to PP on the piece. If you know, you know. Next up, we have another common tactic. This is called a skewer. A skewer can be thought of as kind of a reverse pin. A skewer occurs when a piece is attacking a high value piece and a lower value piece is behind it, which is why sometimes it gets the nickname of reverse pin. For example, in this position, black's king and black's queen are on the same file. So this is a weakness for black that white should try to exploit. And they have an option here, rook to f3. Rook f3 is a check on the king, so the king is gonna have to move out of the way to some other square. It just so happens that the only legal move in this position is king to e4. So now, since the king had to move out of the way, the queen, is very vulnerable and able to be taken right away by the rook. A skewer is much less common than a pin, but it is still a very useful tactic that you should know. Most commonly, it will occur in endgames, where either a rook or a bishop will check a king and then there will be a piece behind it that can easily be taken. Alright, let's see the next tactic. Number three is the fork. The fork is probably the most hyped chess tactic of all time, and rightfully so. I mean, it's used in virtually all of my thumbnails. It is so unbelievably satisfying to get a crispy, juicy royal fork on the king and the queen. So this is one of the most common forks that occurs in chess, the fried liver attack. So in this position, white has the opportunity to go knight to f7. Now the knight is forking the rook and the queen, but the king cannot take because it is protected by the bishop. So now whatever black does, white is gonna be able to win a full rook. The fork is probably my second favorite tactic. And if you're wondering what my favorite is, you're just gonna have to wait. All right, number four. At number four, we have revealed checks. I'm gonna be 100% honest. Revealed checks are the singular reason why I reached 1000 ELO. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, people below 1000 never see revealed checks coming. I would very commonly have a revealed check and when a queen, a rook, a knight, whatever it be, and the opponent would almost immediately resign. They're a little difficult to set up, but if you can set one up, they can be devastating. In this position, for example, white has the opportunity to have a revealed check against the king. The black king and the white rook are on the same file, and the only piece preventing a check is the white knight on e5. So white has the opportunity to go knight c6. Knight c6 is the revealed check on the king. But what is also happening at the same time is the white knight is attacking the queen on d8. So because black is in check, they are forced to respond to the check. For example, if black goes king d7, white is just gonna win the queen for free. Like I said, revealed checks are such a powerful tool to use below the 1000 elo mark, but I mean, they're viable whenever. And if you can set one up, I would highly recommend you do. All right, let's move on to number five. Next up, we have one of the most powerful tactics in all of chess, the double check. The double check is similar to a revealed check, but instead of attacking a separate piece like a queen, the knight in this example would also attack the king. Let's take a look. Knight d5. So it is a revealed check by the bishop onto the king, and also the knight is attacking the king. A double check. So since it is a double check coming from two opposite directions, there is no opportunity for the opponent to block or take a piece. The only option that the opponent has is to move their king to a separate square. So let's say that the king moves to c6. Let's look again. Do we have any other checks? Maybe a revealed check? We do. Knight e7. This just so happens to actually be checkmate. Again, it's a double check by the knight and by the bishop, so the king has to move to a separate square. But there are no squares that the king is allowed to move to. These squares are blocked by the bishop, blocked by the pawn, and this is blocked by the queen. Double checks are the single most powerful moves in all of chess. Not only do you force a check, but you also force a check where the king has to respond by moving to a separate square. So the outcome is much more predictable, but still not my favorite opening. That's coming up right now. Okay, the time has finally come. My favorite chess tactic. 
danger levels. There are a few different names for danger levels, counter threats, the check capture attack list, but I like the name danger levels because it's what Gotham Chess taught me. So let's say that white moves their bishop to b4, trying to attack the black rook on f8. The first instinct you might have is to move the rook e8, but that's not actually the best move. If we look at danger levels, basically you want to attack a piece of higher value than a rook or equal value. So let's look at the highest value piece first, the king, a check. So let's say queen b6. Queen b6 is a check on the king, and it just so happens that it is also an attack on the bishop. So not only are you going to protect your rook, you're also going to actually win a bishop in the process. So let's see, queen b6, white blocks or moves out of the way, and the queen takes the bishop. Very beautiful. Danger levels can occur in various different ways. If you want to learn more about them, check out Gotham Chess's videos. He has a few videos on danger levels. All right, let's see what the last tactic is. The last tactic in this video is Zitzwang. Zitzwang is more of an idea than an actual move, but basically it's just putting your opponent in a position where there are no good moves and any move that the opponent makes is going to damage their position. So in this example, let's say white goes queen to e5, creating opposition on the black king. Well, any move that black does in this position is going to give white an opportunity to push their pawn. Let's say king f7. Now white's going to be able to go king to d6, and all of these squares are protected by the king, so that way the pawn can march up. Now black's best move is king g7. It's not a good move, but because black is in Zitzwang, there are no good moves for black. So now white is going to push their pawn, and it is inevitable. White is going to go and win this game. Let's see this finish out. Now, white has promoted to a queen, and black is dead lost. An example like this opposition is just one example of Zitzwang, but often Zitzwangs are used to allow a draw in a seemingly losing position. They're very, very difficult to spot, and if you see one, you're gonna seem like a genius. And yeah, they're just really awesome. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. If you made it all the way to the end, comment down below Jawline to let me know that you watched the entire video. Also, let me know your favorite tactic. I'm interested to see. If you want to check out another one of my videos, check out what your favorite opening says about you. I have two videos on those, so watch either one. Alright, I'll see you next time. Peace.